Hey everyone, this is Phil. Let me adjust the camera. Cool, very cool. Um, all right, so today we're going to talk about the MS Cube MS3V1. Uh, say that three times fast. It's kind of an unconventional name for, for a cube for a few reasons. But uh, yeah, this is a new cube. People are talking about it a lot because it's so similar to GAN. So today I'm going to talk about what I think of the cube. Uh, in a variety of contexts and uh, some of the interesting issues that this cube presents to the community. So uh, I, I wrote this itinerary for you guys. Um, it essentially says, what is MS3v1? Is it good? Is it GAN fodder? And overall product opinion. So uh, you might notice I'm using the, the vocabulary GAN fodder. Um, don't worry if you don't understand this. Just keep watching. I'll explain what uh, GAN fodder is. And I'll give you an example so you know exactly what it is. So, what is MS3v1? Uh, it is a, a speed cube that uh, just released uh, very recently in the American market. And uh, it has two versions. It has the standard and the enhanced. So that's already like quite GAN-like. You know, GAN is, I think, the only other company that really distinguishes its products like that. And uh, the standard version is just a, a corner edge magnetic scheme. It's a very normal cube. And the enhanced version has center edge magnets in addition to corner edge magnets, kind of like the Volk Elite. So you have one with 48 magnets and the other with 96 magnets. And uh, that's the difference between standard and enhanced. Uh, of course, the logo for the enhanced is like fuchsia and uh, the logo for the standard is green. Um, and uh, that's, that's about it. Uh, it uh, interesting fact about this cube is uh, that its designer apparently worked for GAN uh, as a former GAN engineer. Uh, that's some uh, one of the things I've, I've been hearing around, and I think it's pretty credible. And uh, it definitely kind of explains why the cube looks the way it does. Uh, instead of the honeycomb pattern it has on uh, the, the internals, it has this spider web design which pretty much it's the same thing. It reduces friction and it holds lube. It's the same thing. It doesn't really matter what pattern it is, I think. And it's a very small detail. Um, so I suppose it technically matters, but for all practical purposes, it doesn't. And uh, it has an interesting latch-based uh, core system. Uh, the cube does not use screws. Instead, it has a little dial you can turn for tensions. There are five different settings. So that's pretty cool. You can tension it by hand. Uh, I personally like a screw, but Hey, whatever you know t five tensions is better than four tensions is better than three the more granular you get the more detail you can get the, the closer it is to an actual screw and uh, the other part is the elasticity adjustment system uh, it's really subtle and really actually kind of hard to understand but uh, apparently you can you can hook in the the center piece and turn it to the left or to the right and depending on where you turn it uh, it compresses the spring in a, in a different uh, in a different way. It's extremely subtle, and I actually struggled for quite a while before understanding what it was. And I'll get back to that in the overall product opinion. So now a lot of you are wondering, is it good? You know, for for speed cube, is this cube good? And my opinion is, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty good. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and be unrealistic and say it's as good as a GAN 11 um, because it's not. But it is, for its price, uh, not a bad cube. The standard version runs for $29.99, and the enhanced is uh, $34.99. I think the enhanced uh, actually has value. Uh, the standard, not so much, because without the extra magnets, the cube does have some stability issues, uh, which uh, is one of the main sort of discussion topics for, is it good? Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the, the enhanced version, it, it is more stable, it is more usable, and it's a lot more enjoyable because it's not, you know, like so flexy and squishy that you can't control it when you're turning fast. So it's pretty good. It's a, it's a little rough. Uh, reverse corner cutting is a, is a little problematic, and uh, M slices are, are not super sharp, and it still has some stability issues despite the, uh, the extra magnets. So I think... Uh, while it will attract certain people to, to use the puzzle, it might not get attention at the highest levels of uh, speed cubing because it, it doesn't really offer you know, any big performance jumps compared to the, the flagships that are already out. Um, if I had to compare this cube with other cubes, because I know that's important, I would say on the outside it looks like a GAN. Uh, that's really obvious. Just take a look at the... Shoot, I just pointed it the wrong way. <laughs> take a look at the picture um, over here, I think. Yeah, and uh, yeah, obviously it looks like a GAN. If you covered up the logo, you'd be like, oh, that might be a GAN. 
Um, on the inside, it feels like a like a mix between the Valk Elite and an MGC. Uh, it has a kind of uh, like a compact, crispy, sort of crunchy feel to it that is, uh, yeah, similar to, to the cubes I just mentioned. And uh, of course, because it has the center edge magnets, it'll feel like a, a Valk Elite. Uh, so yeah, on the whole, I think it's a serviceable cube. At $34.99, it's not bad. It's around the same price as like a WRM 2020. And uh, yeah, but I, I don't personally, I don't think it's as good as, you know, the, the WRM, uh, the classic WRM or the, uh, the GAN 11. It just doesn't stack up uh, for stability reasons. So <clears throat> the third topic, is it GAN fodder? Fodder, yes. Uh, so when people use the word fodder, typically they use it in like a, a food feeding context. Uh, it essentially, most of the time it has to do with like feeding animals. <laughs> but uh, in this context, uh, I think it's really appropriate because GAN fodder has really enriched GAN in the past at the expense of other companies. And I'll give you an example. So. Uh, the biggest example I can think of is the uh, the Yuexiao EDM, the Guoguan Yuexiao EDM. That is the biggest exhibit of GAN fodder I can find in this uh, market. Uh, this is how the story went. So uh, Yuexiao EDM released with a switch-based magnet system. You just adjust the switch and it adjusts the magnets. Um, on a side note, this cube doesn't have adjustable magnets, but I don't think it needs it, so that's cool. So back to the topic, uh, the EDM could adjust magnet strength using a switch and that's amazing that's cool tech first of its kind released on the market again don't want to make any assumptions we don't know if gan conceived the idea simultaneously or before but just didn't execute it as quickly but uh long story short moyu came out with it first so consumers saw it first and they said hey look moyu did a great job uh but was awkward is uh ooh, the cube was not stickerless and moyu behaved in a way that was really strange. They, they, they discussed things about how it wasn't practical to, to make it stickerless, and that alienated a big part of the market. You know, a big part of the market is people who like stickerless cubes. In fact, it's so compelling that GAN didn't even release a black version for its new flagship, the GAN 11. So um, for a company that does 3x3 so much and has it being a big part of its portfolio, you'd imagine, you know, people would take it seriously and GAN made a somewhat okay decision um and uh yeah moyu really missed out an opportunity because they made a cube that was functional that had a cool design no one's seen before but they alienated a huge part of the market and as a result the sales of that cube uh that didn't go too well uh that's what i call gan fodder because gan then implemented a similar idea in the xs and released it after the edm again don't want to make any assumptions i don't know if they thought of the idea first or second or at the same time who knows but they released second but the excess was a good cube and the the attracted a ton of sales a ton of success endorsements records and uh, you know what the GAN excess was stickerless so uh, they were able to do what moyu complained was not practical and uh, they were extremely successful and that is the example of GAN fodder it's essentially a product that was supposed to be cool and successful but the extent of its success is just a proof of concept right all that EDM did was it proved that you could make a magnetic switch system. And uh, it became fodder. Fed GAN and uh, GAN grew big and strong because of, uh, partly because of that, or maybe because of that, who knows. But what the consumer sees is EDM didn't do good, XS did good, XS ate the EDM. So is this cube GAN fodder? Uh, my short answer is no, it is not GAN fodder because this cube actually stands on its own as being an okay product. Uh, there are, as I said earlier, problems with the product, but there are a lot of good things as well. You know, the cube moves reasonably well. It has a really cool feature. Uh, the price isn't crazy, and aesthetically it looks like a GAN, so some of these are, are benefits, and I think the, the product has enough benefits where it just doesn't seem like it'll die and then GAN will enrich themselves, you know, by absorbing some of the tech or imitating a feature you know they, they might still do that you know other companies might still do that and use it as fodder but i don't think it will be that successful i think this cube will get sales and be somewhat popular so 
that's my opinion and it goes back to the cube being reasonably designed you know it has a stickerless version it has an interesting feature it doesn't completely suck so um, that's cool so overall product opinion we're on the we're on the the last part now overall product opinion um, I personally I think the standard version is completely pointless uh, if I so obviously I'm not in charge of this company but if I were I would get rid of the standard version um, because a you run into a lot of marketing problems so I think this company like this company marketing wise is is gonna be cool but over time it might attract some question marks um, but first let me talk about the, the standard version I just don't think it offers anything good like it's not stable um, there's a version that's better than it for five dollars more I just think it's a uh, it's a little inefficient to have it. Um, I, if I designed a cube, I would want people to buy the best version of it possible if the prices are similar. The only way I would have a standard version if, it's, if it was like significantly cheaper, like if it was like 20 bucks, then I would say, okay, now there's a real choice. Do I get the good cube that's expensive or the, the not as good cube, but like I'll live with the price, you know? So that's, that's my feeling, the $5 difference I think it's uh, I think it's kind of trivial, and I am not sure why they did that. So it brings me to the next, you know, point is, uh, ooh, let me talk about actually let me talk about the product first before I get into the PR. So the feature that they released is confusing. I spent so much time trying to understand it, and none of the packaging and the marketing material, nothing really explained it very well. Um, nothing that the consumer gets in the box at least and you know what you shouldn't assume that people will read other explanations online or whatnot you know it's uh, it's pretty dangerous to do that but uh, yeah it just it's nothing in the cubes packaging explains actually what it does so we actually made it we studied it and we made a YouTube video about it uh, we being the cubicle so you can check it out I have a link in the description if you're curious um, it was actually frustrating you know I opened the product and I, I became a consumer right uh, because I'm, I'm just a cuber I like cubes I have some experience in it and I wanted to understand this feature so badly but it was so difficult because it's not very well explained so I uh, I don't think so I think the feature is interesting but I don't think it's very good uh, here's why one it's not well explained two you've essentially like it's really actually for me it's hard to adjust the the elasticity system when I can't see what's being adjusted because so there's a there's a hook that goes in and you can be turned left or right but I don't know where the hook is relative to to the hole because I can't see it if the cubes assembled so I have to disassemble a lot of the cube in order to actually see what I'm doing and I think any elasticity adjustment system that requires disassembly is going backwards um, because the norm now is you adjust elasticity without having to, to fit on with your cube. So I think the feature is at best extremely novel and fun and interesting and at worst confusing and uh, over-engineered. But hey, it's a new feature. It doesn't use screws. Um, it, uh, it's latch-based. I think it's very creative and interesting. So I said interesting like a ton of, ton of times, but it is interesting. Um, so that, that is it. Um, so now let's move on to the, the PR problems. So who, this is really interesting. So this company is called MS Cube and, and the, the, the cube is called the MS3 V1. Who do you think is going to be pissed off the most? I'll give you like a few seconds to think about it. Uh, there are two answers to this question. So maybe if you want to like pause the video or if you want to just like wait, I'll hang out and uh, just think about it. <clears throat> Get some water, actually. That's a good idea. Okay, so I personally think that this product and this company is serves to piss off two, two, two companies. One, Chi, two, GAN. So I really don't understand the relationship between MS Cube and GAN. Uh, they've essentially taken the exterior design of a GAN, but made a cube that's cheaper. And uh, it's really weird because, you know, if I were GAN, I'd be like, hey, what the heck, dude? Like, you used to work for our company, then you up and leave, and then you make a thing that's like half the price that looks the same. This serves to confuse the consumers, and it's really awkward and strange. Um, 
of course, I don't know how Gan feels. Maybe Gan receives a royalty for, uh, you know, this cube being sold. Uh, maybe they have an agreement where the, the designer is allowed to make something that looks like a Gan. Who actually knows who owns the rights? I mean, if he if he's an engineer and he designed Gan cubes in the past, who really knows whether the company has the rights or the designer? If they're smart, the company has the rights, but who knows? Who knows? Who knows? So no one really knows who who owns this design and what parts of the design are are can be protected by by ip and so it's it's really weird to to, to think what gan thinks of this uh, situation um now what does chi think well chi has a, a line called the ms and now this company has a cube called the ms 3v1 and the chi company has the ms 3x3 so think about that for a second and maybe ponder how confusing that might be and uh you know, ask yourself, like, is the name protectable um, where they're from, China? I don't really know. But, uh, yeah, is it protectable? Is it is it worth being protected? Is it worth getting upset over? Um, it, it's a really weird situation. And, you know, for a guy who's been in the industry for a while, like, assuming he's been designing cubes, I think he should have known that Chi had those cubes, and he should have known that this cube looked like Gan, so maybe part of it was intentional. You know, part of maybe the plan was to say, okay... This is a GAN lookalike, and we'll write off the GAN brand to to create some attention and get some buzz, right? Like, can you imagine the headline, like, former GAN engineer um, turned entrepreneur gonna make new cube and, you know, all that stuff. So definitely that's, like, marketing content, um, but at what cost, right? Who knows what's going to happen between uh, this company and the other companies and uh, the community? Uh, who, who can tell? I have no idea. But one thing is for sure is uh, until something like really happens, I'm gonna assume that everything is okay. Because honestly, if this product makes it that far into the product development stage, I'm going to assume that they did their due diligence and didn't do anything like horribly illegal. So we're going to offer it on our store and uh, you know give it to the community and let the community decide if it's a good cube. Um, the one thing I really wanna like stress here is I really don't wanna take this cube's marketing to, oh, this is like a, this is a cheap GAN or this is a, like a, uh, this is a, a GAN, but but lower price. I think y you know it's actually <clears throat> it's okay to describe the cube as looking like GAN, because if people don't have the cube, it's kind of a way to get them to understand what the cube looks like, you know, and how it feels. Like it feels like a Volca lead and MGC mixed with a GAN look. Um, that's cool, but marketing it in the context of GAN in the long term is uh, a little. You know, I don't agree with it. I think it's a little distasteful because um, you're really not doing this company any favors. Unless, of course, you think that they just want to be, like, you know, budget GAN for the rest of their lives. Like, I would hope that this designer has some, you know, dignity and some aspirations of actually building a company. And if that's the case, I would really much rather see this cube stand on its own and say, hey, this is the MS cube first model. It has these features and it's pretty cool. By the way, it looks like a GAN cube, in case you were wondering. Like, I think that's a, a more even-handed approach to advertising the cube. Um, but, you know, for the purpose of letting people understand that it's it looks like a GAN cube, but it's cheaper, like, sure, right? I just hope that this doesn't continue in the long term, because uh, I really hope that this company and its designs can form their own personality, right? Form their own personality and character and position in the market. That's what I hope for. I hope they can be a player. They've obviously shown that they're very creative. Uh, I mean, Gan is creative, and this guy worked for Gan, so I'm sure he had a part in doing that. And his new design, to point direct correctly this time, the MS3 V1 was also pretty creative. So yeah, that's my overall product opinion. Uh, if you do want to get this cube, it's available on the cubicle. Please get the enhanced version, I think. If you get the standard version and you think uh, that the uh, cube is not as stable, you m probably will be upset with yourself for not spending five extra dollars. Uh, so yeah, definitely, definitely do that. Um, I really think the enhanced version is like significantly better. And uh, yeah, overall, I want to see this see this product release a V2 or see this company uh, rather release a V2, be more successful, develop their own personality, um, protect themselves against being fodder, which they've adequately done here. So I'm very happy and uh, hopefully uh, The vibe is good. Hopefully, you know companies don't get mad at this one 
and we can enjoy new releases by a greater variety of companies. All right, time to head out. See you later.